Hello and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. I can't wait to get started on tonight's story. It's chock-a-block full of wonder and imagination. It's captivating. But, I hear you ask, is it really the best bedtime story ever? Well, can I let you into a little secret? I know that Gillian wrote it after spending hours looking through all your incredible story ideas that you continue to send in with your reviews. She actually named Bob after Bob the Purple Monkey, who sent us a little film on Instagram of him drifting off to sleep to our podcast. So, why don't you lie back, listen and see for yourself what you think. Or you can fully relax, take some long, deep breaths, and take my word for it. (laughs) Tonight, we meet a mother who is getting ready to tell her children a bedtime story. Her sons can't agree on which of their favourite stories they would like to hear, and their mother suggests they make up a new story. This is The Best Bedtime Story Ever by Gillian Rogerson. The early evening was Mum's favourite part of the day. It was a relaxing time when she could sit with her children and tell them a soothing bedtime story. As usual, her sons, Kieran and Finn, would take it in turns to request a story, and their mum would either read from one of their favourite books, or she would make up a new story. But that evening, as she sat on the comfy armchair between her son's beds, she realised there was a problem. The family had been on holiday to France for two weeks, and they had filled their days with one energetic activity after the other. And when it had come to bedtime, her sons had climbed into bed and fallen asleep before they even had the chance to ask for a bedtime story. As a result, she had forgotten whose turn it was to choose a story. Kieran snuggled down in his bed and said he thought it was his turn to pick a story, and he would like the one about the gorilla who did magic tricks, because it was the funniest story he knew. He chuckled at the thought of it, and said it was the best bedtime story ever. His younger brother shook his head, and said actually it was his turn to pick a story, and he wanted the one about the rainbow kitten, who found some treasure inside a magical willow tree. Finn folded his little arms, gave his brother a long look, and said the kitten story was the best bedtime story ever. Kieran folded his arms as well, and said the gorilla story was the best bedtime story ever. Even better than the story about the astronaut who found a planet made of custard? Finn asked. I thought you liked that one best. Kieran smiled. Yeah, I do like that one. And I thought your favourite was the story about the dragon who loved dancing. Finn unfolded his little arms and giggled. He said he did like the dragon's story very much. He wriggled about happily in his bed and asked Mum to tell them the dancing dragon story again. Even though Kieran loved the dragon story too, He told his mum it was definitely his turn to choose, and he wanted the astronaut story now, instead of the gorilla one. Finn immediately disagreed and said it was his turn to choose. Mum knew her sons well, and by the looks on their faces, she knew they would be happy to discuss whose turn it was for the rest of the night. She smiled brightly at them and said, I've got an idea. Why don't we work together and make up a brand new story? It might be the very best bedtime story ever. What do you say? Kieran and Finn gave the matter some serious thought for all of two seconds. Then they nodded their heads and said they would like that. Good, Mum said with a hint of relief. 
Kieran, where would you like our story to be set? In outer space, he said without any hesitation. Finn pulled on his mum's sleeve and asked if it could be set in the ocean too, where all the mermaids live. He loved stories about mermaids. Mum nodded. I suppose we can have both places. What characters should we have in our story? Kieran gave his little brother a kind smile and said, The astronaut could be a dragon, and can we have a mermaid too? Mum smiled and said it was their story and they could have whatever they wanted in it, and anything at all could happen in the story. Her sons beamed at each other. The boys had a little chat with each other and decided the mermaid should be called Glittertail and the dragon's name should be Bob. Can the dragon be purple, please? Finn asked. Mum, Glittertail really wants to play football. Can you make that happen in the story? Of course I can, Mum said confidently. I'm not sure how, just yet, but I'll think of something. Now then, settle down in your beds, boys. Wriggle your fingers and toes and take some deep, relaxing breaths. The boys did as they were asked and snuggled down some more in their comfy beds. Mum said softly, I'll begin my story. It's called The Best Bedtime Story Ever. Once upon a time, there was a purple dragon called Bob. He loved doing all the usual things that dragons liked, such as flying over the mountains, dancing under the light of the moon, and playing hide-and-seek with his friends. But the thing Bob liked doing most of all was standing outside his home at night time and looking up at the stars and moon. There was something so magical about the night sky, and Bob's parents would often find him gazing at it with a faraway look in his eyes. Bob wanted to know how many stars there were in the sky. Did they have names? Did they make a sound when they twinkled? And what about the moon? How big was it? And was there another moon somewhere else in the sky? His parents tried to answer his questions, but they didn't know all of the answers, so they borrowed some books from the library to see if they would help. The books did help with some of Bob's questions, but not all of them. And as he continued to look up at the sky, night after night, Bob came up with more questions. How many planets were in the sky? Who lived on them? And what did they look like? What was beyond the furthest planet? Had any dragons ever flown into space? His parents only knew the answer to the last question and said as far as they knew, no dragons had ever flown into space. On his birthday, Bob's parents bought him a telescope so that he could see the night sky in greater detail. Bob loved his telescope and used it every night, but he still had questions about outer space and decided the best way to get answers was to fly into space and explore it himself. His parents agreed but didn't know how he would get there. He could try flying, but it was a long way to travel. And where would he stop for a rest if he wanted one? Bob said he would need a spaceship. And because his parents had always told him he could do whatever he set his mind to, he said he would build one himself. With his parents' help and some more books from the library, Bob built a spaceship. He painted it bright yellow and added some red go-faster stripes along the sides. He practiced flying the spaceship through the mountains, much to the surprise of the other dragons who lived there. Before long, 
it was time for Bob to head into outer space. He put on his best T-shirt and shorts, brushed his teeth and used the bathroom. His mum gave him a packed lunch for the journey and his dad gave him a flask of peppermint tea. Bob climbed into the spaceship, waved to his parents through the window and set off on his first voyage into space. Upwards he soared, high above the mountains, up and up, high above the earth, up and up and up, until the sky turned from light blue to dark navy. Bob the dragon steered his spaceship through sparkling stars and around brightly coloured planets. There was a huge smile on his face. He couldn't believe he was finally travelling through space. It was even better than he had imagined, even more magical. It was like he'd entered another world. He thought about his questions about space and considered counting the stars, but realised there were far too many of them and it would take a very long time to count them all. He moved closer to a twinkling cluster of stars to see if they were making a noise. He couldn't hear anything, but looking at the beautiful stars up close filled his heart with joy. Bob carried on flying through the sky and decided to stop at some of the planets to see if anyone lived on them. He landed on the nearest planet. It was buttercup yellow and surrounded by a pale orange circle of mist. Bob landed his spaceship on the planet and put on his space helmet. He left the ship and stepped onto the soft surface of the planet. It was covered in bright yellow grass, which tinkled and chimed as he walked over it. There were trees everywhere, and all of them were full of peculiar-looking fruit that Bob had never seen before. Two aliens wearing gardening gloves appeared from behind a tree and said hello to Bob, and said hello to Bob. They'd never met a dragon before and were delighted to meet him. Bob said he'd never met aliens before and was very pleased to meet them. He stayed a while and chatted to the friendly aliens, then went on his way. He stopped at a few more planets and all the aliens he met were exceedingly friendly. Bob told them where he lived and invited them to visit his home any time they wanted to. They said they would. Bob went on his way. As he was zooming through the starry sky, Bob noticed something peculiar ahead. A little star was twirling around and seemed to be waving. The star looked like she was dancing. Or was she waving to him? Bob steered his ship closer to get a better look. The star saw Bob and gave him a big sparkling smile. She moved over to him and floated at the side of his window. She said hello and asked where Bob had come from. When Bob told her about Earth, the star sighed wistfully and said she would love to visit Earth. She had only seen it from up high but one of her friends had been to Earth recently and said it was beautiful. Bob told the star he could take her on a visit to Earth and they could go right now. The star was delighted and thanked him. She asked if she could sit on the corner of his window to get a good view of his home planet. Bob said yes and the star settled herself down on the window. 
Bob heard her singing happily to herself. Her joyful song made him smile. Bob turned his spaceship around and headed home. After a while, Earth came into view, and as they flew over the ocean, Bob told the star they were heading towards his home in the mountains. The star pointed to the ocean, her eyes wide in wonder. She asked what all that water was. Bob told her. The star said she had learned to swim in the rivers on Mars when she was very young, and she loved swimming. She'd never seen an ocean before and wanted to take a closer look. Before Bob could say he would move closer, the little star leapt off the spaceship's window and flew towards the blue ocean. When she got nearer to the water, she reached her front arms out and dived into it. Bob steered his ship towards the ocean and landed on a sandy beach. He climbed out and stood on the sand. He looked at the vast ocean and wondered how he was going to find the little star in all that water. He didn't want to leave her in the water, not when he had promised to show her his home. Perhaps he should call out for her. Bob didn't know her name, so he called out, Little star, little star, where are you? The little star didn't appear from beneath the waves, but someone else did. A mermaid with sparkling silver hair popped up and smiled at the surprised dragon. She swam closer, and her glittery golden tail rose from the water behind her. She said hello to Bob and said she'd heard him calling out for a star and wondered which one he was looking for. Some of her best friends were starfish, and she asked if he was looking for one of them. Her voice was as soft and soothing as the ocean's waves. Bob smiled shyly at the mermaid, and explained the star was from the sky. The sky? the mermaid said in astonishment. How can that be? Bob pointed to the spaceship behind him and told the mermaid how he'd built it and then flown it into space. He explained how he'd met the star and that he was giving her a lift to Earth. With a little grin on his dragon face, Bob said, but she decided to go for a swim instead. The mermaid laughed softly and said she would go below the water and search for his friend. She introduced herself and said her name was Glittertail. Bob gave his name. Glittertail looked at the spaceship and told Bob she was very impressed that he'd flown into space. Bob explained it had always been a dream of his to go into space, and he had to make it happen somehow. He asked the mermaid if she had any dreams. With a far away look in her eyes, Glittertail said, I do have a dream. I want to play football. I've seen children playing football on the beach many times, and there's just something about the game that fills my heart with joy. I wish I could play it, but there's a problem. She lifted her glittery tail in the air and said she wasn't sure how she was going to play football with a tail. Bob remembered how his parents had always told him he could do whatever he set his mind to. He said to Glittertail that there must be a way she could make her dream come true, 
and he would try to help her if he could. Littertail smiled at Bob and said, That's a kind thing to say. Thank you. I'll go and find your star now. I won't be long. With a flip of her golden tail, the mermaid disappeared beneath the water. A second later, she popped back up with the twinkling star in her hand. She swam over to Bob and held the star out to him. The star had the most enormous smile on her face and said it was a different world under the sea. There were fish shaped like stars, waving grass that looked like it was dancing, animals with eight arms, and sparkling rocks that looked like they'd come from space. She asked Bob if he'd ever explored the sea. Bob said he hadn't, but hearing the star talk in such glowing terms made him want to swim in the sea too. But there's a problem, Bob said. I don't know how to swim. The little star smiled gently at the dragon and said she was a magical star, and she could make wishes come true. And because Bob had given her a lift to earth, she wanted to repay his kindness and give him a wish. Bob looked at the mermaid, smiled, and told the star he would like to give his wish to Glittertail. Glittertail tried to say no, but Bob insisted. The little star looked up at the mermaid and asked what she'd like to wish for. Glittertail said, I wish I could play football. The little star floated free from the mermaid's hand. She twinkled brightly and a shimmering cloud of sparkles appeared around Glittertail. The mermaid's mouth fell open in surprise, and she said, I've got legs, Bob, I've got legs. She swished them back and forth in the water and laughed. I wonder what they feel like to walk on. I hope I don't fall over. Bob waded into the water and held his hand out to the mermaid. Glittertail put her hand in his, and slowly placed her feet on the sandy ocean floor. Bob led her out of the water and onto the beach. He kept hold of Glittertail's hand as she got used to her legs. It didn't take her long at all and she was soon running and skipping along the sand, laughing in delight. Using her magic, the little star made a blue football appear. She threw it over to the dragon and asked if he knew how to play football. Bob did, and spent the next ten minutes showing Glittertail how to play the game. The little star sat on a rock and watched the dragon and the mermaid kicking the football back and forth as they ran across the sand. Their joyful laughter filled the air, making the star so happy that she glowed brighter and brighter with every second that passed. Whenever someone scored a goal, the star cheered loudly. After a while, Bob and Glittertail decided to have a rest, and they sat next to the resting star. The mermaid wriggled her toes in the soft sand and smiled. She thanked the star for giving her legs. The little star said, You are welcome. 
I'll tell you the magic words to use, and you can have your tail back whenever you want. And, if you want to have legs again, the same magic words will give you legs again. Littertail thanked the star again. The star smiled and said she was having a lovely time with them in the sunshine, and it was because of Bob that she was there. The star told Bob he could have another wish, and maybe he'd like a tail this time, so he could go swimming in the ocean with Glittertail. Bob thought that was a great idea, but he had something else in mind. He looked at his spaceship and said his wish would be for Glittertail and the star to go on adventures with him in space. He'd only explored part of it so far, and with the star's help, they could travel beyond the galaxies and perhaps find new planets. The star shone brightly and said she would love that and didn't need to use a wish to make that happen. With a smile, she explained how she'd heard a fable about a planet far, far away that was full of trees who told bedtime stories to visitors. Bob asked Glittertail if she'd like to go with them too, and if so, was she okay keeping her legs a little longer? Glittertail said, I would love to go with you. Perhaps there's a planet out there where everyone plays football all day. Bob looked up at the endless sky and said, anything was possible. Bob, Glittertail and the little star climbed into the spaceship and took to the sky. Upwards they soared, high above the deep blue ocean. Up and up, high above the earth, up and up, until the sky turned from light blue to navy. Bob the dragon steered his spaceship through sparkling stars and around brightly coloured planets. There was a huge smile on his face. Travelling through space with his new friends at his side made him feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Together, the three friends explored the outer reaches of space. To Glittertail's delight, they did find a planet where aliens played football all day long. She joined in with the games and had a wonderful time. Bob and the star cheered her on from the sidelines. They found a planet that was made of cake and when they landed on it, the aliens invited them to join them in a cupcake picnic on Raspberry Sponge Hill. The three friends discovered more amazing planets, including one where waterfalls of sparkling lemonade flowed from marshmallow mountains into huge lagoons full of glittering emerald water. The three friends found the mystical planet where trees told bedtime stories to visitors. Bob landed the spaceship on the planet. The friends climbed out and sat down on a soft blanket which had been placed beneath an oak tree. A gentle whisper of a breeze travelled through the leaves of the tree making a soft, rustling sound. A kind face appeared in the trunk of the tree, and he smiled at the visitors. In a deep, soothing voice, he asked if they were ready to hear a bedtime story. 
The dragon, mermaid, and star nodded. Bob yawned, and his friends did too. The tree began. Once upon a time, there were two boys called Kieran and Finn, and they lived in a place far away. They loved hearing bedtime stories, and every night, as they listened to one, the words of the stories would gently lull them to sleep. Finn and Kieran's mum stopped talking. She looked over at her sons. They were both fast asleep all snug and cosy in their beds. She wondered how much of the story they had heard. She would ask them tomorrow. They would probably want to hear it again. Mum walked over to the window and looked up at the starry sky. She smiled. Perhaps there was a dragon in a spaceship up there, going on adventures with a little star and a mermaid with sparkling silver hair called Glittertail.